Okay, hi ladies, I'm back, I'm excited. Um, you are a member of the Morning Miracles Challenge and I just wanna say thank you to Allison, Becky and Beth who have been co-leading this with me and shepherding, helping everyone complete those critical three steps so that you could get in an official group and say, hey, hi Katie, good to see you. Um, let's see, I just wanted to let you know who's in for sure that I have on my list. Welcome Cindy, Vicki, Clavel, Lisa, Nicara, Tasha, Allison S, Susan, Sherry, Amanda, Pauline, M Mandy, Allison T, Tara, Shonda, Christy, Becky, Beth, Gail, Linda, Deborah, Robin, Gabriella, Maria, Christina, Sharon, and Sandra, and Cindy, and Kelly, and Edie are all amazingly amazing because you did all the three steps, thank you. And if you're not in an official group for July, do not worry. You can create an unofficial group by talking to the members who weren't able to complete the three steps. But I'm really gonna focus on the official members right now and get, you, get our hearts and minds aligned with what the Lord is doing, what we hope he will be doing with our morning routines. Okay, so if you signed up for this challenge, I think it's because you wanted to change how you approach the day, and not just for 10 days, but every day. I believe God wants to help you with that um, because he wants to conform you to the image of Christ. I don't know if you realize that, but it's true. Yes, um, he wants us to deny ourselves and live by the spirit rather than by the flesh. And you know, I you've heard me say this before maybe that I, I like to call the snooze button the flush button because that's what it does when I click the snooze I lose I want to get out of bed with purpose I want to display his glory and there's a battle every morning between the flesh and the spirit so if you feel God um, calling you to glorify him with your mornings or um, well, I think you must or you wouldn't be here. So um, maybe so far the flesh has won and it's time to change that story. Who agrees it's time to change the story? Give me a thumbs up or a heart or something. Thank you. Um, that's why we're here. So I'm excited for what the Lord is going to do and we're not going to be able to do this alone. And we're not even going to be able to do this with the most awesome accountability team in the world. Like, even if you were an award-winning, uh, like, figure skater, <laughs> right? Well, wait, 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 I'm saying this wrong. So suppose we had an award-winning championship te cheerleading team every morning that was going to do an amazing like acrobatic stunt for you every morning, rooting you on in their award-winning way, you still <laughs> wouldn't be able to win the Super Bowl alone. <laughs> Am I right? Like it, just because you have an amazing accountability team, it, it's not going to guarantee that you succeed, especially if it's in something that you've always lost on in the past. So how many of you have um would say that you typically have lost this battle of the bed um that that's kind of your story so far tell me in the comments i want to know and hi hope hi clavel and belen hey hi allison hi kelly how have you been uh doing with this whole idea of getting out of bed with purpose. Um, hi, Kelly, yeah, yeah. So maybe you feel like you're in, in that Super Bowl and you're alone and there's a bunch of gigantic men running towards you. <laughs> and that's how it feels when you're going into this challenge. When you look at your worksheet, you're like, it's great, I have this, but it's not gonna protect me from the onslaught that's coming my way. Okay, I get it. I understand, you know, your success in this challenge or anything that God calls you to depends first on the posture of your heart. So we need to commit 
today um, to obedience to God. And I hope that you'll be able to watch this video in full tomorrow if you have time because it really is designed for your day one. And day one happens to fall on a Sunday this time. So you can see we have days one through 10. Day one has all the things listed. Okay, if you want to do the things, absolutely. Personally, I look at Sundays is a day of rest, and that means I rest from pretty much anything that is challenging. <laughs> so a challenge would count as challenging, but it is a day that I don't ignore the things that God has put on my heart. In fact, I get closer to God about them, and I go into prayer about them. So let's take tomorrow, Sunday, to... Um, commit ourselves in a new way okay to this challenge maybe you've done this challenge before this is a chance to approach your mornings with purpose but this time with your ears primed to hear from god and i have been using discerning the voice of god personally in my reading time in the mornings and i'm gonna bring out some of what i'm learning for you so even if you don't have the book um, I'm going to be asking you questions this time. It's not just going to be pictures of your shoes <laughs> and pictures of whatever. I'm going to ask you meaningful questions uh, that are going to hopefully bring you closer to hearing God and getting encouragement from Him every day. So from discerning the voice of God, there is this quote from Priscilla Shire that I think really will help us align ourselves with what the Lord is about to do. Okay, so here it is. We're not likely to hear anything from God until we've abandoned our tug of war with him between our wills and his. We'll quell the resounding voice of God's spirit within us the more we ignore or disregard it. He will not long waste his words on those who aren't postured to obey. Wow. And I have said it before, um, if God can raise Jesus from the dead, <laughs> he can get you out of bed, okay? So your flesh has been fed an absolute feast with you, the way you've been pressing that snooze button every day. And that flesh is extra strong, right? But it's never faced Jesus like this before, not in the way that we're approaching this challenge this time. In a spirit of obedience, You've never brought the Holy Spirit into the morning battle like this before. And maybe your motives were wrong before. Maybe they were to prove yourself to God or to prove yourself to other people, like the people in your accountability group. Or maybe your motives were to prove yourself to yourself. I know that that's been my motivation a lot of the time. I don't want to believe that I'm this person who's lazy, who doesn't care about this precious gift of a new day and ignore the fact that I have goals and dreams. I'm, I don't wanna be that person. So I have another quote from you and this one's from this guy named Tim Chester. Um, and it says, we don't change so we can prove ourselves to God. We're accepted by God so we can change. Ooh. <laughs> God gives us a new identity and this new identity is the motive and basis of our change. So just let that settle in for a second. Did you like that? Is that good? I think it's good. So it really comes down to this identity and what Priscilla said as well about the posture of our hearts. And these are things I've never even talked about with you. And yet I realize they're absolutely essential to being able to not just be successful and filling in some stars, but to actually get closer to the Lord in the mornings and have it be a permanent change in the posture of your entire heart in your entire way that you approach daily life. I mean, that's what this is about, okay? So who are you? Let's talk about identity for a second. I'd love to hear from you. Tell me some things about who God says you are. And hi, Robin. Hey, Marky. Hey, Barbara and Beth. Thanks for joining me. 
Tell me in the comments, what are some things that God says you are? And I have three personally that I really want to highlight. I wonder if you'll pick one of them that I picked. Well, first of all, I think that we are a child of the Father. And when we become, when we accept Christ, he brings us in to his family. Not everyone is a child of God. It's like, what? I always thought, well, we were all children of God. But I've heard it said by many pastors along the way, like, look, there's a difference. You've you've had a new a new life has been given to you so jesus bought our freedom and we're no longer slaves with a slave master we are children with a father adopted into the family of god so good okay so we got we have to get that into our minds and belen says we are beautifully and wonderfully made it is true it is true we are the bride of Christ, and this is a big one. That's a really exclusive relationship, by the way. Like, that's a one-on-one -on -one relationship, the church and Christ. Mm -hmm. And Paul wrote to, the Christ, to Christians in Corinth about this relationship, and I hope that it's going to help you approach your mornings differently, honestly. Okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 2 through 3 if you have your bible turn there second corinthians chapter 11 verses 2 through 3 and he says for i feel a divine jealousy for you since i betrothed you to one husband to present you as a pure virgin to christ but i am afraid that as the serpent deceived eve by his cunning your thoughts will be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. So why would we leave a husband like Jesus <laughs> for a cheap alternative, right? So sin is adultery and it never satisfies. And I have to tell you, my friends, that if God is putting it on your heart to spend time with him in the morning and you are instead turning uh to the other side of your pillow, <laughs> you know, that's a sinful act. And um, we're, we're really trading in our time with the Lord, this precious time of, of developing relationship for nothing, okay? It does not satisfy, and you know that, and we'll talk about that more in a second, but good news, Jesus washes us and makes us holy for himself, Okay, so let's live out, though, what he's pictured for us and worked for us to be. Um, when we think about a, a bride waiting for her groom, she's not just sitting there. I want to use that time to get more and more gorgeous <laughs> for God, you know, like, and I'm talking about on the inside. I want to use this time to do more to make it, it's, to make it an amazing day, to make it a, a day that reunifies. So think of yourself that way. As a, as a bride waiting for her groom. You really are, because that's what God says about you. Okay. And really, it's the whole church, of course, but we're a group here. And when we're gathered, you know, this is, this is like church time. This is us being the church. Okay. So what else are we? The last, the last one, the temple of the living God. <laughs> and I say this all the time. Oh my gosh, we were bought with a price and we are not our own. So what does that do? What does that change? Well, we're the home of the Holy Spirit now. The Holy Spirit came to live in us and we're being sanctified and transformed by what? By God's DNA. Whatever you believe about yourself, not a morning person or whatever, God is a morning person, okay? In fact, God never sleeps at all, but we don't need to do that, thankfully. But um, you're not that stuff. You are what God says you are. So how do you choose to define your morning self? This is an important question to ask yourself. And what are your biggest struggles? What is the morning you? Like, 
what is the morning Clavel? Who who is the morning Cindy? I want to know who the the morning Gail is, who the morning Sherry is, who the morning Hope is, and Alice and Natasha. Who are you in the morning? Does it align? So here's some reasons that we don't necessarily give our mornings to God. Okay, and which of these resonate the most with you? Let me know <laughs> if you hear one that really resonates with you by putting like a lot of thumbs ups or something so I can get a sense of where we're at. All right, how about, are you a we'll do it later person in the morning? Like um, you, you procrastinate in the morning and that could be like you press, like you wait, you just don't get it done. You, you say, next month I'm going to do this, and I'll do it better next month. I'll care more next month. But it won't happen. It never does, and you know that. Or maybe you're this kind of person in the morning. You want more sleep, so you press the snooze button. But you know what? You're going to be groggy all day anyway, and you know that. You know that, don't you? Like, you figure that out by now, I hope. You know, that snooze button actually doesn't do anything for you. Okay, that morning, what you know what it does though? It feeds the flesh. So the next one, are you not a morning person? I heard someone say this earlier. Well, there is no such thing as a morning person or a night person. It's a false identity from the world. There's nothing in the Bible <laughs> about this. Um, and the only identity we want to live by, especially something that's going to change the way we approach our daily life, is one that's conformed to the likeness of Christ, right? I hope you agree with me there, right? So maybe you're this kind of person. Maybe you doubt that it matters whether you're obedient in this area of giving your mornings to God. But if God has led you here, it means he's jealous for your mornings. And if he's jealous for your mornings, if he's jealous for anything in your life and he keeps bugging you about it, okay, first of all, that's a sign of love. That's a sign of love that he would want you all for himself, that he wants your mornings for himself. Recognize that, it's a beautiful thing. It's not like the world's jealousy that's about ownership, it's about relationship when it comes to God in this case, okay? And it means that there's something attached to it for you. There's something that he wants to give you really bad that's connected to your obedience in this area if he keeps bugging you about it. And I really want to help you get it, okay? Maybe your mornings are full of disappointment because you feel God has um, not helped you succeed in the past, you know? Maybe you just have past failure and you think that when when it when you've had it happen poorly so many times it means you're going to fail again and but that's that's not good because when we stumble we're called to get up again again and again and so you're here you're you're not i'm glad you're here that means you're getting up again okay how about this have i pinned you yet have you have i called you out yet on anything i hope so okay disappointment and the the purpose of calling this out is just to to instill truth in areas where you might be, be believing lies and I'm doing this out of love and devotion and out of humility because I struggle in every one of these areas okay that's how I know to tell them to you right the next one that no one else in your family gets up early and this is especially for you moms and you don't want to upset the way the household is working so or maybe your husband doesn't get up early um but you know what god isn't doing a work in them in this area he's doing a work in you in this area take that as something special okay hold that close all right let's talk for a second about stubbornness and pride so at this point, if you've been kind of lazy and disheveled with your mornings and you've been that way for years, 
then you may think that you're too set in your ways, okay? Maybe you think that it's this is just who you are, like, like a, not a morning person, okay? But no one is set in their ways unless Jesus says so. So recognize that that is slavery and get God's help. Let's get serious, okay? So sorry, no, your pride isn't stronger than God's desire for you. It's not. He went, he went to the grave. He, he went down to the bad place, okay? And came up to, to capture this eternal life, this, this gorgeous gift for you. He's not going to trade it in for your snoozy, bruisey self, okay? I'm sorry, he's not. So, and not, he's not going to do that to me either. He wants it. So, maybe you're unsure about how to make your morning with God happen. You've never had it. And you're just like, is that even a real thing, Laura? Is, am I, what is, what is this all about? Is this just about works and filling out a checklist because I've tried that I want to know God's gonna be there when I get up well we're here for you okay um we're a group that's dedicated to actually seeing that happen I want to hear your testimonies of gorgeous intimate time spent with the Lord where he spoke to you where he answered prayer for you I cannot wait Okay, and maybe you're comfortable with how you are. And all the lies that have piled up over the years have distracted and disoriented you. But I say enough is enough. Okay, we want to pursue God and we want to hear from him right now. <laughs> like, can it be morning now <laughs> so that we can start? Tomorrow is Sunday, but... I just want to remind you that Jesus had a will of his own too. And he had a flesh and he had a plan for his life. And he had desires of the flesh, but he submitted. Okay? Because God had a plan that was much, much, much greater than one person and one life and a guy who can turn water into wine as a party trick. He had a much bigger plan. And he has a much bigger plan for you than whatever little tricks that you have up your sleeve right now and whatever job and whatever relationships. He, I'm not saying he's going to totally replace those things, but I'm saying he has more for you. And John 5 verse 30, I can, it says, I can do nothing on my own. I judge only as I hear. These are the words of Christ, okay? And my judgment is just because I do not seek my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Let's go back to this for a second. From discerning the voice of God. Priscilla said, the will that is submitted to God is not extinguished. It is simply surrendered. Ultimately, submission centers us directly in the will of God and gives us the opportunity to experience the best we could ever imagine. God knows what's best and only requires us to obey that we may experience it. So hold on. Yeah, it means submission and obedience. That's what I'm here to talk to you about today and get you ready for that. It's not about you. Okay, this is bigger. It's like, if God put this on your heart, there's something attached to it. And I have to tell you, I don't think it's a new car. <laughs> you know, I think it's bigger. It means, it means it has to do with a eternal plan. It has to do with something that is more beautiful and life changing than you could ever know. But you won't know it until you start getting in touch with God on a daily basis. That's what we're trying to do. Okay, so do you trust God for that though? Do you really trust God for that? Tell me. You may not fully understand why you were led to this group um, to hear from a curly-haired girl like me. <laughs> okay, 
Um, and to me, I think like each one of you that comes into this group, it's like, okay, God is doing something not just in me, but in others too. I don't think of it as me giving to you. I think of it as God giving to us because we're all gathered here with the same desire, this desire to meet with him. And maybe you don't even know why God gave you that desire to try this again. <laughs> like for how many of you is this not your first time? Tell me in the comments if this is not your first time. Or tell me if it's your first time, just write first time. So if this isn't your first time, you know this is, you're like, wow, this is different. Like, Laura has changed it up. I have. Because I've been watching and lo noticing that, guess what? Certain things weren't working and it had to do with hearts. Kelly and Barbara, it's your first time. Um, I'm glad. <laughs> and Beth and Allison and Hope, thank you for your patience and sticking with me. And I'm grateful you're here. Tasha, love it. I hope you're you're seeing a change in me uh, toward God with this. He's been tugging on my heart too. Okay. So we're going to do it with faith, whether it's our first time or our 30th time. I haven't done it 30 times. I think we started in December of 2017, but we do it with a faith that is fully assured that in his goodness, and we're going to be bold. Is that anybody's uh, word of the year, bold? I, I know someone who is their word of the year, right? We're going to make the decision to obey and say yes to God. And so right now, as I close... And I appreciate your time and I want to make the most of it. That's why I'm talking so fast. Um, I have something for you to take action on. And you can do this on Sunday. You could do this today. Just make sure that you do this for your kind of day one reflection, day one thing, day one prep. Um, and I just want you to think about the things that are keeping you from surrendering to God with your mornings. And... It may not be on this list, you know, oh, I didn't pray, oh, I didn't do affirmations. Like, I'm thinking it's gonna be different, you know? We've never talked about this stuff before. So ask him to search you if you're not sure what's causing you to stumble, okay? Psalm 26 verse two says, examine me, O Lord, and try me, test my mind and heart. and I'm hoping that you'll search your motives. We talked about motives briefly at the beginning. And I'm, I'm asking you to ask God to reset your identity if you have some identity issues with the morning time. And let your only identity be the true identity, be the child of God, the bride of Christ, the temple of the Holy Spirit, the living God. And define those things for yourself. Get that into your, your state of being. And in 2 Corinthians 5, chapter 5, 21, look it up, okay? That's your thing. That's the thing. I want you to imagine Jesus on the cross for the things that you listed out that are your stumbling blocks. Like, really think, because he was on the cross for you for that. And Jesus became sin so that you could be free, okay? So let me, let me try this with you really quick show you what this looks like as an example. God made Christ who had no fill in the blank with the thing you struggle with. So for me, procrastination and rebellion to do what? To be lazy and sleep in every day. Okay. For me, so that in Christ, I might become intentional and honoring of my mornings before God. Try that on for size. Take a taste of that. See if that doesn't change your, the way you think. God made Christ who had no past failure to be riddled with self-doubt and disappointment for me so that in Christ I might become fully confident in my ability to get up and try again before God each and every day. 
So yield to God anywhere you sense resistance and doubt, my sisters. I love you. That is why <laughs> I say these things to you. I love you because I know that you're my sisters and I'm going to see you in heaven too. So this relationship isn't over. But more than our relationship, I really want you to have a relationship with God. So if you, if you enjoy time with me, I'm so grateful. But please take time in the morning with the Lord so you can hear from him and be washed by his word every day. Changed and have that identity shift that is so desperately needed. Get your heart and mind aligned, pivoted, changed, forever turned away from all that weirdness into someone who's decided to be obedient and actually walks and that does what she says she's gonna do, is an amazing teammate, not because she wants to show off about how good of a teammate she is, but because she genuinely cares about who God has put in her life to walk through this 10 day challenge with. Okay, I love you, thank you so much, and I will see you on day two with another message that will be much shorter. <laughs>